This is the second section of chapter one on circular motion. And this section is acceleration of an object moving on a horizontal circular path. OK, so let's imagine that this is our circular path sort of viewed sort of edge on. And we've got a particle um, that's moving around in that circular path. Well, we're going to have a, an acceleration which is going to be directed towards the center. So I'll just put that on there. And if we have the angular uh, velocity, then that acceleration is equal to the radius times by omega squared. So that omega is the angular velocity. And if we have the linear velocity, then the acceleration is going to be equal to V squared over R where V is the linear velocity. Now there may be forces that are keeping this particle on this circular path and stop it from flying out of that circular path. And that could be tension if there's a sort of string or rope that it's attached to and that would act towards the center in the same direction as the acceleration. Or it could be friction. So it could be something that's traveling the circular path like this and there's no slipping which means we'll have our maximum frictional force and the force acting towards the center would be mu r so if we've got either one of these forces then we can use f equals ma now if we do have mu r for example then that does mean that we would need to consider the normal reaction which we'd get from mg because we'd need R so that we can work out mu R, this frictional force, which we can then put into F equals MA. Example four, a particle is moving on a horizontal circular path of radius 20 centimeters with constant angular speed two radians per second. Calculate the acceleration of the particle. So here's a diagram of what's going on here. I don't really need this because it's fairly straightforward to work out. Uh, since I have the angular speed, then I'll use the formula acceleration equals the radius times by the angular speed squared, omega squared. So that'd be A equal to, now the radius of 20 centimetres, we need to change to metres, our SI units. So it'll be 0 0.2 times by omega, which is 2 squared. So it'll be A equals 0 0.8 meters per second square. And that acceleration is acting towards the center of the circular path. So I'll just put that down, acting toward the center of the circular path. Example five, a particle of mass 150 grams moves in a horizontal circle of radius 50 centimeters, a constant speed of four meters per second. Find the force towards the center of the circle that must act on the particle. So here's my diagram uh, showing what's going on. First thing I'm going to do is to change the units to SI units, so 150 grams is going to be 0 0.15 kilograms and the radius which is 50 centimeters will change to 0 0.5 meters so on this question it tells us a constant speed here four meters per second so i can see from the units here that this is the linear speed so that means to find the acceleration i will use v squared over r so that will give me an acceleration of 4 squared over the radius 0 0.5 and that will give me a value of 32 meters per second squared so this is acting towards the center of the circular path now we can use f equals ma because we're trying to find this force F, that's why I've labeled it on my diagram. 
and the mass 0.15 times the acceleration 32 and that gives us a force of 4.8 newtons so a combination of the formula for acceleration and then F equals MA. Example 6 one end of a light inextensible string of length 20 centimeters is attached to a particle p of mass 250 grams uh, the other end of the string is attached to a fixed point o on a smooth horizontal table p moves in a horizontal circle center o at a constant angular speed of three radians per second find the tension in the string right so here's my diagram of this particle moving in a circular path so remember this is sort of a slanted side on view this is not the view from the top and um, first thing i'm going to do is to work out the radius now that's the same as the length of the string so we'll just put length of string equals the radius of this circular path which is 20 centimeters which is going to be 0 0.2 meters the mass of the particle is 250 grams, which will be 0 0.25 kg. And since we have been given the angular speed, the acceleration is going to be equal to R times omega squared. So A will be equal to 0 0.2, that's the radius, the same length as a string, times by the angular speed squared. So that's going to be 3 squared. So I get an acceleration of 1.8 meters per second squared acting towards the center of the circle. I can now use F equals MA. Now F is the tension in the string. The mass is 0 0.25 kg and acceleration 1.8. So that gives me a value of T of 0.45 newtons. Example seven, a smooth wire is formed into a circle of radius 15 centimeters. A bead of ma mass 50 grams is threaded onto the wire. The wire is horizontal and the bead is made to move along it with a constant speed of 20 centimeters per second. Find a horizontal component of the force on the bead due to the wire. So here's my diagram and it's asking for the horizontal component of the force and this circular path is horizontal so it's this force here acting towards the center. Now if it asks for the vertical component of the force that would be the normal reaction and then we'd need the mass times by g to work out the size of that normal reaction um, but we're not asked for the size of that uh, vertical force will take that away. So the first thing we're going to do is to change these units. So the radius, which is 15 centimeters, needs to be changed to meters. So we'll get 0 0.15 meters. The mass, which is 50 grams, needs to be changed to kilograms. So that's 0 0.05 grams. And the one that you may not spot that could be left is a constant speed of 20 centimeters per second we need to change that to meters per second so our speed our linear speed and i can tell that by units is going to be 0 0.2 meters per second i suppose i should show that i'm converting that from 20 centimeters per second to 0.2 meters per second so step one is to work out the acceleration and since i've got the linear speed the acceleration is going to be equal to v squared over r the radius so that will give me a is 0.2 squared over 0.15 And that will give us an acceleration of 4 over 15 meters per second squared. We can now use F equals MA. 
to find the size of this horizontal force here, which I've just called F. So that would be equal to the mass, which is 0 0.05 times by the acceleration of 4 over 15. That gives us 1 over 75 newtons. Or if we were to give that to three significant figures, but 0.0, .0 and then 1, 2, 3 significant figures there. So we'll just highlight that before we move on. Example 8. A particle P of mass 10 grams rests on a rough horizontal disc at a distance of 15 centimeters from the center. The disc rotates at a constant angular speed of 1.2 radians per second and the particle does not slip. Calculate the force due to the friction acting on the particle. So here's my diagram. Um, as I've done before, we need to do some converting. So a mass of 10 grams is going to be 0.01 kg. The radius, which is 15 centimeters, is going to be 0.15 meters. And in this question, we have the angular speed. So I'll be able to calculate my acceleration by doing r times omega squared. So that means my acceleration is the radius 0.15 meters times by 1.2 squared. And that's exactly 0.216 meters per second squared. I can now use uh, F equals MA. And I've called this uh, frictional force F. So it's the frictional force F is equal to the mass. 0.01 times by the acceleration 0.216. So that's 27 over 12,500, or as a decimal, um, 0.0216 newtons. These are all newtons, or um, your calculator may give it to you in standard form. 2.16 times 10 to the power negative 3. We'll just highlight those. So either one of those uh, would be fine. Since we're not using G, there's no restriction on giving exact answers on a question like this. Example 9. A car of mass mkg is travelling on a flat road round a bend, which is an arc of a circle of radius 140 metres. The greatest speed at which the car can travel round the bend without slipping is 45 kilometers per hour. Find the coefficient of friction between the tires of the car and the road. So here's my diagram of what's going on here. So here's the weight of the car. So this little circle here is meant to represent the car. My normal reaction here. And since it's asking about the greatest speed at which it can travel, um, then that means that our friction is at its maximum because it says the greatest speed at which it can travel around a bend without slipping. So we've got to the maximum value of our friction and that's going to be equal to mu r. F max equals mu r. So that's why we need r in this question. Now the only converting I need to do is the linear speed in kilometers per hour which i need to change to meters per second so this is the way that i do it 45 kilometers per hour is the same as 45,000 meters per hour so i need to divide that by 3600 to work out how many meters per second and that gives us 12.5 meters per second since we have the linear speed the acceleration is going to be given to by v squared over r so that would be 12.5 squared over the 
radius of the circle, which is 140 meters. So that gives us exactly 125 over 112 meters per second squared. So on this one, we'll want to be looking at the forces in this vertical plane here. And if we resolve those forces, we'll get R equals to mg. Then resolving in this horizontal direction like this, we'll have uh, or we'll be using F equals MA. So F, that force directed towards the center, F max, which is equal to mu R, so I'll write that in a moment, equals MA. So that's going to be M times by 125 over 112. So we'll write that as mu R equals M times by 125 over 112. Now we have R is equal to MG. So we can replace R with MG. So I'll have mu MG equals M times 125 over 112. What happens is these M's will cancel out, divide both sides by M. From there, we will get mu is equal to 125 over 112, and we're dividing both sides by G. So I could leave my answer uh, like that in terms of G. Or if we actually um, work this out and evaluate it, um, we'll get 0.11, that's 388483. But remember, we can't give an ex exact value. So either two significant figures, which is what the uh, 0 0.11 is, or to three significant figures, 0.114. Okay, so I believe your answer in terms of G, terms of G, or two significant figures or three significant figures but you wouldn't give your answer exact because if you did that you would end up losing a mark so let's just highlight our answers here for our value of mu so you should now be able to do exercise 1b on pages 8 to 11 of the textbook.